crowds are beginning to converge on the eve of Undas. Authorities remind those who will visit their departed loved ones about the do's and don'ts in cemeteries. Non-incumbent winners of the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections will have to wait a while before they can assume office. The DILG and COMELEC want a transition period. And one expert explains the slide and the public ratings of President Bongbong Marcos and Vice President Sara Duterte. Fast, focused, and fearless, here's a roundup of stories we're watching now. I'm Denise Tan. Visitors have started to arrive in different cemeteries in Metro Manila. Fewer people flock the Manila North Cemetery as of 4 p.m. today. Even Cemetery Director Rosal Castaneda was surprised at the low turnout. They were expecting around 200,000 people today, but the crowd estimate was only 55,000. Management initially estimated over a million guests for November 1. Now, they are only expecting 500,000. One reason cited is the exodus of people to provinces to vote for the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections yesterday. Meantime, Manila North Cemetery Management is reminding everyone that visiting hours will be strictly followed from 5 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. Vehicles are likewise not allowed to enter the cemetery. Meantime, around 600,000 people expected to turn up at the Manila South Cemetery. The South Avenue will remain closed to motorists. Other entrances will be opened on Wednesday for the anticipated influx of visitors. The Manila South Cemetery closed at 5 p.m. today and will open again tomorrow, November 1st at 5 in the morning. And for those visiting the cemeteries on All Saints and All Souls Day, here are a few reminders. Take a look at your screens now. Prohibited items include pointed or bladed weapons, flammable materials, illegal drugs, liquor, portable cooking stoves, and loudspeakers. Pets are also not allowed in some cemeteries like Manila North. Meantime, here are the prices of flowers in Dangwa in Manila, the go-to place during Undas. Centerpiece flowers are now selling at 100 pesos while a basket costs 500 pesos. A one-sided basket of flowers go from 700 pesos to 800 pesos while a bouquet costs between 700 pesos and 900 pesos. 10 pieces of carnation are priced at 200 pesos while 6 pieces of white radish cost 150 to 200 pesos. Moving on to another story, the Interior Department wants a maximum of three weeks as transition period for newly elected Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan officials. DILG Secretary Benhur Abalos says this much time is needed to appoint a Barangay Secretary and Treasurer, as well as set up a bank account for the payroll of new Barangay and SK workers. On the other hand, incumbent officials who want another term can assume office immediately. Comelec earlier proposed a one-week transition period. This is to prevent any monetary accountabilities from sitting officials which winning bets may be blamed for. Meanwhile, all BSK candidates including those who lost in the polls must submit their statement of contributions and expenditure or SOSE until November 29. Here's a rare but legal way to resolve a tie in election results. In Barangay 7 of Kasiguran in Aurora, Sangguniang Kabataan bets Alex Agabao and Noriel Torre both got 52 votes. A best of three coin toss decided the winner last night. Take a look at this. <laughs> Agabao won that flip and was declared SK chairman. There have been a few instances in past local elections when a tie in votes was broken by a coin toss. One of the most memorable was that of the late daughter of Jesus' Lord founder and congressman, Eddie Villanueva. 
She won as mayor of Bokawe, Bulacan in 2016 via a coin flip. We're bringing you more stories after this quick break. Keep it here on One News. Thanks for staying with us here on One News Now. I'm Denise Tan. The Foreign Affairs Department reports that there are still nine Filipinos in Gaza City amid Israel's ground invasion. In an interview with One Balita Pilipinas, DFA Undersecretary Eduardo de Vegas said they are struggling to contact these citizens due to the telecommunications blackout. Filipinos in the war-torn area are staying in a shelter and most of them are in the southern part of the Palestinian territory. But they are not without challenges. Hindi, hindi pa ako magsisinungaling at sasabihin na okay na okay sila. Hindi mm. po. No? I mean, masamang situation. Merong 9, 9 na nasa Gaza City pa kung anong sinasalakay ng uh, Israel ngayon. May pagkain daw sila. Ang problema, tubig. In other news, Okta Research sees inflation as a possible factor in lower satisfaction and trust ratings of President Bongbong Marcos and Vice President Sara Duterte. The chief executive's trust rating dropped by 2 percentage points to 73%, while his performance rating slid 6 percentage points to 71%. Vice President Sara Duterte's satisfaction rating suffered a double-digit decline of 12 percentage points to 70% while her trust rating saw an 8-point slide to 75%. Okta Research Fellow Guido believes Filipinos still trust Marcos and Duterte, but they want more from their leaders in terms of addressing present issues. The people continue to trust them, but uh, they're saying, uh, okay, this is what you said uh, you will do. Mm -hmm. um, we want you to deliver on your promises. And so far, we're still seeing um, inflation rates still high and prices of goods um, still high. And... Um, you know, uh, some uh, uh, we're still seeing access to uh, basic uh, food and goods um, to be uh, continued concerns. David also sees the issue of confidential funds as another minus point for VP Duterte's numbers. David won't attribute Speaker Martin Romaldez's increased rating to the House's decision to strip the OVP and DepEd of secret funds. Romualdez's satisfaction rating rose by 6 points from 55% to 61%, while his trust ratings improved from 54 to 60%. When I looked at the um, trust and performance of the Senate and uh, the Congress, they both increased actually during mm. the, this period. Mm -hmm. So it, it, um, well, maybe the series of events affected not just them, but the um, upper house and the lower house as well. 
One more story before we go. Several celebrities went all out in dressing up this spooky season of Halloween. Isabel Daza channeled her inner wicked villain and slayed Angelina Jolie's maleficent look. Young star Andrea Brillantes in her ABCD squad dressed as the cast of hit movie Mean Girls. In another costume, Blythe also transformed to Amalia who is half Encanto and half Manananggal. Meantime, on-screen partners Donny Pangilinan and Bel Mariano also suited up as Captain Barbell and Darna. Main Mendoza brought laughter online after she dressed up as a roller coaster. One News Now will be back tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. I'm Denise Tan. We are One News, all sides, all the time.